Sad times, sad, sad times. So I debated on making this video for a number of days. Uh, a lot of people have chimed in on their opinion of Cold Steel being sold. I really, disclaimer, I don't have any radical ideas on it. I don't have anything that's an alternate opinion than anyone else. I kind of fall in line with everybody else is saying, but I still felt like I wanted to make a video on it. It's a big deal, it's a big topic. It hits me pretty hard. Those that have followed my my old channel, which I turned into my new channel and then stopped doing anything on there and started this new channel. Anyways, uh, those that have followed me for a while know that I've always been a fan of Cold Steel, um, despite being ridiculed for it. Um, my channel is filled with high-end custom knives, but I still love my Cold Steel and I always preach to the Cold Steel. And I got a lot of hate for it. Uh, I got some people that liked it, but I think I got more hate than anything else. Um, why do I like them? There are some, some fundamental core things that I love about them. I, I love their design philosophy. I love Andrew Demko's designs slash uh, his mechanical designs, the locks he does. <laughs> they're, they're truly revolutionary. They really spoke to me in terms of, you know, when I got into knives, seriously, I love the overbuilt tank type thing uh, with indestructible locks. Like that was kind of my, my thing that I loved. I still do. And, uh, Cold Steel was cool because they created arguably the strongest lock ever made on a folding knife, and yet they didn't have to be overbuilt and crazy. Like uh, he did it through engineering and ingenuity in the actual lock design, as opposed to you know what some of the other approach was just make everything thicker, bigger, heavier, you know, bigger frame lock, bigger blades, all that stuff. Um, but they did it from more of a, a engineering standpoint. So that really spoke to me. I also like the fun of it. I love that they made swords, still make swords. Well, we'll see. Um, I love that they did their yearly video or they chopped up pieces of meat. It was cheesy, it was dumb. I felt dirty for watching it, but I loved it just the same. I thought it was cool. It's a cool concept. Like they may, <laughs> they may have pushed it too far for some people and did things that people didn't want to see. But the fact that they said, hey, we make knives, so let's do an event video every year where we show us using our knives like you i don't really see that you know why is kershaw not doing a video where they do you know how well they perform you know you're in the business of making a tool essentially it's obviously much more to that to a lot of us uh, but it's a tool and uh, why, why not show what it can do and do it in a fun crazy way that's my opinion anyway so i really like that i've been collecting them for a long time I've got everything from old school pre-triad lock cold steel folders. I've got some of their crazier folder designs like this immortal here, love this guy. I've got the scorpion lock on the AD15. These are just a few that I, I grabbed, I've got a lot. I've got the Gen 2 Spartan, love this guy, one of my favorites. Uh, this new um, SR1 Lite. This is also very cool. Love this uh, grivery handle, by the way, the texture they have on there. Very nice. Um, I've even got some fixed blades. Here is a Frontier Bowie knife. One of my favorites. I should have cleaned the blade before showing it off. Uh, this has a beautiful hot blued blade. I don't know if you can really see how amazing that is. It is covered in sheath filth right now. Every time you put it in the sheath, comes out covered in dust of some kind. But uh, yeah, very, very nice. Now, you know, obviously this isn't made, well, I guess maybe not obviously, this is made by Windless Cutlery, rebranded by Cold Steel, which if you don't know, a lot of their bigger, crazier knives and swords, uh, katanas, great swords, all those things are actually made by an Indian company called um, Windless Cutlery. I think they might use Topeka as well. You can buy directly from them, uh, but something like this is made by them for cold steel. So Windlist doesn't have their own branded version of this exact knife, but they have some that are, are very similar. But anyways, long story short, I have a lot. Um, I have a, a junk drawer full of like old Voyagers. I, I collected like all the XL Voyagers. I've got the um, XXL Espada, the new version. But the point is, I don't see good things ahead for this uh, purchase. I really don't. I tend to be kind of a pessimistic guy, but in this case, 
I, I don't have my hopes up. I don't think it's going to go well in the long term. Um, typically, when you see these kind of purchases and mergers and things, they just they end up at best being a watered down version of the original brand. Um, at worst, they just go to complete trash. So, I'm hoping for the former that it that it continues on in, in some sort of vein of the original. I, I don't see the innovation. I don't see the new designs. I'm not sure if Demco is sticking around. I have a feeling he's not. Um, I'm sure he's there to help with the transition. I'm sure Lynn is there for the transition, but I, I don't, based off of what their their tone is and some of the press releases, I don't think they're they're going to be working with them. And you know why would they? They obviously sold the company for a reason. So um, I could be wrong though. I could be wrong. Sometimes these companies are sold because they get um, overwhelmed with the day to day payroll, marketing, all these things. And they simply want to do the fun stuff, which is design knives, promote knives. So it is possible that he gets hired on Lynn as some kind of marketing director, uh, product owner type thing. Uh, we have yet to see that. But I hope, I hope at the very least that for the next year, they continue on with the current product line. They keep making these knives as is, which would make sense. Um, you wouldn't really want to buy a company and then just day one, redo the whole thing, cut out the line, start over. Um, you, you probably want to keep the ball rolling until everything settles down and then start moving in a different direction if that's what you're trying to do. That will allow us fans to pick up some of the knives that we haven't picked up or, you know, in my case, I, I sold a lot thinking I'll buy the newer version, you know, assuming that there'd be a new G10 version or something coming out. And I'm like, I'll just, I'll just wait. I'll sell this one now and I'll buy it when, when it's something other than, than black or, or whatever. So it'll give us a chance to kind of pick up the knives that we didn't get to pick up a while back and uh, kind of complete our collection before everything goes, goes away. But those are my thoughts. Uh, it is definitely sad. I don't see it ending well, but hopefully we get another year or so of our, our current cold steel that we love. So, all right, guys, that's it. Um, just kind of quick thoughts or not so quick thoughts on cold steel being sold. Very sad times. 2020, you suck.